All right, at this stage now, we have all the information in place, and we have all the, the forms that we need. We have those little eye holders, the, the marbles. Uh, if you're a traditional guy, then you'd be putting those uh, marbles or some shape in there to kind of uh, build the clay around. We ha we're ready. So we really only have one more thing to do, and that is dig deeper into the form. So we have delineated things like the nose as a wedge, and we've gone in and started to hint at the uh, some of the musculature in there, started to hint at some of the form, but it's still really broad shapes. Now we need to get in, put a nodule, get the fibers of the mouth flowing, uh, get that triangularis coming in, the mentalis. Uh, let's get the infraorbital. Uh, triangle in there. Let's really get the what's happening underneath the uh, brow. Is it, uh, you know, what what are we going for here? Now it's a guy. Tr don't try to do females right away. That's that's asking for trouble. We're going to make a guy that way. If it looks a little more rugged um, and rough, you know, we're not going to beat ourselves up for it. Uh, and we're going to really start to fix this kind of odd Klingon, Kardashian kind of face shape there. Uh, Cardassian, sorry, didn't mean to get that mixed up <laughs> with pop culture. Um, all right, and start to sculpt. It's all fun now. So uh, I'm going to introduce you to my hotkeys. I've got five for my clay buildup, and this is probably a great time for me to introduce you to how to make them. So the key is to uh, open up your brush palette and you'll see here a, a collection of the brushes you've recently used so you'll have to use the brush first and then it'll show up here and then you just pr you press control alt and you click on it and you can see up at the top it's really hidden right in there it just went away control alt and then right underneath the menu it says press any key combination to assign custom hotkey or press escape or mouse button to cancel or press delete to remove previous command assignment <laughs> that's a mouthful anyways I'm gonna assign that to five which it already is and it gives me a warning saying it's already been done so I all of these guys have been assigned and that's all it is you just control alt click press a key end of story but make sure before you close you store the hotkey. If you don't store it and you don't save it when you close, you have to redo it. Not a big deal. All right, let's get into some sculpting. Let's see if we can spend about 10 minutes or so on this and um and really start to make some kind of character. So, uh it's a male. I'm going to start to establish more of the bone structure and really just start to define the relationships here. Uh, one of the things you'll see me start to do now are tricks, like I'll be pulling form uh, from that frontal process down into the cheek and that'll separate the infraorbital triangle fat. Uh, so I'm going to probably start that one right off the bat. Um, but part of that is getting this inside corner of the eye. I find this to be a really essential part of the equation. So. I'm going to try to create a section. The eye comes in. It's got that caruncula. But then there should be this, this swath of form that comes down to the cheekbone. And then this becomes the lower eyelid. And the lower eyelid has a couple of sections. It's got that section that's immediately hugging to the sphere of the eye and then it's got that section that connects it to the bone and it's this section that connects it to the bone that becomes an eye bag things like that so I'm pressing alt with con uh, clay buildup I'm gonna really push in I'm also going to press alt with the glabella while moving into that starts to help me define the lacrimal bone constantly move you know and then after you've kind of carved away a little bit 
you can build it back up and it'll it'll be a little more structural I find so I like to definitely no matter what I always carve away and then I'll build it back up so let's let's pull this in and I'm 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 now doing this swath that goes between that lower eyelid portion and the bone and uh, this has a little bit of meat it's kind of odd but it can get a little bit more meat right there it definitely can confuse us we're catching some of the eyeball underneath there don't know if you can see that very well but I wouldn't worry about that right now so a little bit of that swath I'm gonna press alt Just starting to define this, getting a little bit out of control. So I'm going to smooth this and just come in and establish some of these broad strokes a little bit more. There we go. Really get that upper portion there. such a beautiful magic to to this to this form I'm going to raise that so it's higher than where that eye is that's going to be important the superciliary arch tends to get raised a little and just pull those forms down occasionally press alt and wrap this guy around there a little bit oops and that temporal line really separate that temporal line from the rest okay and now let's build that cheekbone up a little and separate that cheekbone from the masseter let's get into that nose anatomy a little so nasal bone about right here connecting to the um, frontal process of the maxilla then we're gonna get the lateral cartilage so we're gonna get a little bit of a diamond pattern as the nasal bone and the lateral cartilage connect and then go their separate ways we've got the alar cartilage here we've got the nostril Make sure to keep looking at that from a front view and don't worry if it balloons out of control because you can always switch to the move brush. But you're going to have to switch to the move brush. Don't forget to do that. I'm going for a Surino Debergiac nose if I'm not careful. Get that ailer cartilage up a little. Let's go into clay buildup. I just used my hotkey for it. Think about this this side of the nose. Now you need to have that strong plane in place 
but then you can come in and start to extend and break that a little bit. And uh, it's really hard because you still need that frontal process of the maxilla. You still need a bony surface right there in the middle of what eventually becomes like a curve. Um, but we're going to leave it in there and we're going to add a little bit of fat and there's muscle coming through here, levitator, uh, I forget the name of it. It's, it's a little, it's some, the nose muscle gets actually a little confusing, but we're going to pull down. You see I'm basically pulling from the side of the nose down underneath the nostril. That'll make a difference. That'll help you establish the form that is actually without a doubt there. And then we can give it a little bit of cheek. We can spend a little bit of time here. So I'm going to go B, S, and 3 for slash 3 brush. And I just carved out what they call the alar facial juncture. That's what plastic surgeons call it. Uh, and this alar facial juncture, this triangle, is really important. Uh, whether you see it or not in somebody, you want to be delineating that. Okay, now the other thing I've done is I've put a line in so that the nodules muscle fibers will go that way and I'll be able to distinguish the muscle fibers of the outer portion of the lip. Okay, I'm going to pull, and let's look at this from a front view because the, the mouth should really extend a bit. So move brush, BS3, let's just make some cut lines. Press Alt for some nice clean. And let's get that guy in there. Slash 3 is good for nostrils. Okay, we've got some craziness. I really like slash 3 for the ear. This is line work. If you're a traditional guy, this is when you're getting in to just kind of remind yourself of the form and uh, what's in there. So we're just making little notes. Back into clay buildup. And we're gonna start using smooth a little bit more because, um, well, I'm gonna try to do it intelligently. So watch my strokes. I'm gonna smooth planes and then I'm gonna smooth planes, but you'll see there are lines I don't cross. And you can always go down in subdivision level and it'll have a, have a greater effect. But keep the anatomy in as much as you can. I like to smooth it across lines sometimes just to, to lose the form, to do, uh, if, if you're familiar with the uh, history of painting, you're doing what, say, Whistler would do at the end of a studio day, or, you know, during, in between breaks. You just smooth it all down so that you can come in and, and create form a little cleaner, but you have a lot more information than when you started the day. I can start to play with character types, pull that jaw out a little since we're working with a guy, pull the head shapes around a little bit, give a little bit more. A little more character. Careful, don't lose all that hard work though. losing those lips because I really want a chance to rework them but I'm losing them softly so in this case I'm going to switch back to slash 3 but I'm going to lower my Z intensity and that means that it's going to take longer for the effect to happen so I can press alt and it's a real nice line tool
Oops. starts to come together. Not too much work required. And I haven't divided this model to crazy dimensions yet. I could, and that's a, certainly a way that I go sometimes. Uh, but I haven't. Let's switch over. Give him some eyebrows, because if you do not give him eyebrows, he's going to look weird. The way I like to do eyebrows, just to suggest them, is stroke, stroke, and then stroke. And that tends to follow the direction of growth. Again, this is just to give them a suggestion of form. And last thing I really want to do is just get that fat overhanging it. But one of the things that happens is that as we're sculpting these totally separate forms, we're, we're affecting both of them. So sometimes you want to hide one. And the way you do that is you press Control Shift and you just click it. And then you press Control Shift, you click and drag outside of the model. Don't, don't include it, but outside. And that inverts it. And that means that I've got a moment in time in which I can start to work with that guy and I don't have to worry about it being affected. So I'm going to put a little bit of skin and fat over the, the, uh, the eye there. A little bit more. Get it really close so that there's barely any eyelids showing. You can always put that eyelid back in with a slash three brush. And then to show everything, control shift, click. And we have a working model. I'm going to lower his subdivision level and start to mess up that sagittal crest a little bit and adjust a few things but we're in working order and um, we could probably do these eyes a little sculpturally right now control shift click to show just that guy and what I like to do is I'll just align them with where I want that eye to actually be click and with clay build up I can quickly kind of put that in. One of the tricks, of course, is to make them looking at you and not looking away. <laughs> and uh, of course, that's when you're really close. But this is just one of the things we have to do as sculptors, uh, get that figured out. And so I could sculpt that in another place. But let me show you another way. I'm going to uh, control click and drag out. I'm going to select this line, move it off, drag another one all the way up, off, look at it from a side view, move it to what I assume would be the center, and then I click the center white dot and I can rotate those. I'm not moving them far, just rotating them. Now if you want you can actually get rid of this dark masking. You just go into masking and say turn view mask off. That way you don't have to make any changes to be able to see what this is what this is doing and if it's working. Whole host of issues. But let's leave it at that. 
And uh, let's put our perspective back at 90 and see if that original form. Yeah, so we end up being somewhere around here. Uh, let's go back into 50. And I'm just going to finalize a couple of things because now the eyes are really close together. And my trick is to just start to use the move brush. Make sure you control click and clear or clear the mask. It was hidden from view. This is called cheating, but I want to introduce this to you early on so that I can help save you from the heartbreak of feeling like you have to make things perfect. I just it's just my own mission in life is to make us a little less perfect. Just get in and do the best you can and then if that doesn't work switch to another tactic. Uh, I remember one of my teachers telling me that Peter Paul Rubens would start all of his draw uh, his paintings in the indirect method and if that didn't work then a la prima it was. <laughs> you just do go right into direct painting. He didn't care was the message. What he cared about was that a painting got done. That was what he cared about. And that's what we, that's what I care about. That's what I would love for you as you're learning to care about. You're going to want perfection enough. You're going to strive for that standard enough in your life. Uh, I don't think you need to make it part of your learning process just yet. Okay, so I cheated and I didn't cheat. I did lots of things and we made lots of progress and for doing this in like an hour while I'm explaining it, I'm okay. I'll know tomorrow I'm going to wake up, I'll probably gonna think something's wrong with the eyes and i got to fix the eyes and I'll think something else is up. But I'm going to leave this at this stage. If, if I decide to change it majorly, I'll, I'll add something to this. But we're done. You're done. Get in, sculpt, have fun, and make sure that you are joining us in the certificate program. The I'm going to be walking you through tons of features. Clay polish, shadow box, sub tools topology, all of that stuff. Because what have we done in this session that you've been looking at? We've looked at clay brush, clay buildup, move. We've looked at Z-add, Z-intensity, draw size. We've looked at masking. We looked at polygroups, even though we weren't aware of it. We looked at geometry. Brushes up over here, light box. We looked at transpose. All the things you need to be fully functional as a sculptor right now today. But there's a lot more to be 100% with ZBrush. I shouldn't use that word fully functional because you're able to basically sculpt with your hands, a couple of tools, and clay. And that's all some sculptors use. But if you're in production, you, if you're in any sort of uh, design side of things, there's a lot more to cover. So I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and for being part of this journey and for letting me be part of your journey. And good luck.